Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel, Flashback TNT. In this video I'm revisiting Star Wars again, vintage Star Wars, and I've actually added a lot more than I realised when I've come to gather it together for this video, so um, I'm really going to look forward to talking to you about all this stuff. Uh, I can't remember the last time I talked about Star Wars, I know it was about my figures, but it must have been a month or so ago now. So let's get into it, and uh, I hope you, hope you like what I've picked up. Um, first, I'm going to show you something that's obviously not its not uh, vintage Star Wars, but it's based on the vintage series. Um, and I'll show you, show you what it is before I explain why I got it. And that's the um, Star Wars Escape from Death Star game. It's quite big to show and probably quite shine. So, as you can see, that guy there is the reason that I picked this up. Um, I've got the full 96 run of uh, vintage Star Wars figures, uh, but it didn't. They didn't actually include uh, Grand Moff Tarkin in in the uh, original run, and they've obviously Hasbro uh, Kenner the game here. Um, they've released the figure along with the the board game. Uh, I believe you can only buy the figure with this board game, so it was 24.99, which I thought was worth it considering. People are, are taking him out of this this game and selling selling him on eBay for like thirty quid or so. So I thought, yeah, it's worth getting, and it's nice to add him into the collection. He won't be getting uh, displayed with the the original figures, but yeah, it's nice to have him. So that's the uh, the modern vintage of the way. Uh, next, I want to talk about um, an addition to the collection that I've I've wanted for absolutely ages, and I waited a long time for them to pop up. And I was in the back garden one day and my dad popped over and, and said that his friend had told him that Little had got in some display cabinets. I was like, thank God for that, because I don't know if you know, but Little do um, a Levano display cabinet. Um, it's glass fronted doors with a lock and glass shelving. And it's it's a perfect size for a full run of vintage Star Wars figures. And bang for book, I've looked around everywhere and bang for book, this is the best uh, cabinet you'll be able to get for your figures or, or display figures um, any type of display figures it's all fully adjustable shelving like literally there's not one fixed shelf so you can adjust them all to the heights you want and this cabinet allows me now to get my full set in nicely spread out because you'll have seen my, my set before it's quite cramped um, I'll get approximately like 12 on each shelf I think it is for 96 figures so I'm really looking forward to that to getting them up on display I might do a um, like a, a time capture of me moving the figures from my old display into this new one just just for something to do and uh, I'll post it on my channel yeah so I actually bought two of those in the end because I thought I've, they usually get them in twice a year and I missed it last time round so I thought I'll buy and uh, buy two 49.99 sorry I didn't say like bang for buck 49.99 for that is an absolute bargain and the equivalent on eBay and stuff um is probably around 120 to 150 and then obviously display cabinets can go higher and higher and higher so 49.99 for that I was I was really chuffed so I was happy to pay 100 quid for two and I've still got the other one unbuilt ready to use when I'm going to put my um, my childhood figures in it so from like uh, from all different types of toy lines so I hopefully um, I'll be able to show you that as well once want to do that so yeah that's the uh, display cabinet um, now I'll go on to the next bit, and I think I mentioned these as well in my last video or so about Star Wars. Um, I had a couple of quite heavy, well, very heavy hitter um, weapons and accessories to add to my full set to make it completely complete. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I quite soon after that video, I think I, I picked this up. And it's a Manaman staff. Know how well it's focusing for you yeah so there you are now any of you who who know star wars and collect star wars know that these are quite heavily reproduced on ebay and obviously because it's it costs a fortune this this cost me about 50 quid which i'm, I'm quite happy with to be honest um it's in good condition they usually get a, a quite a, a substantial bend on and um, the painting quite good, Nick, as well, on the skulls. You, the giveaways on the repros is the skulls usually um, are quite uh, undetailed and blobby. Yeah, so 
I'm, I'm really happy to have that. That's, that's my Amanaman uh, now complete. Um, and he's, he's, he's literally mint. Um, and I got him for a good price as well. So to complete him, I was happy to pay 50 pound £50 for that. And the other one, this is probably the most expensive little bit of plastic I'll ever buy um, for the size. Uh, this is for my uh, uh, lightsaber, uh, R2-D2 pop-up lightsaber figure. So yeah, look at the size of that. This costs more than most figures. <laughs> Um, it's probably going to be too hard to, to show you, but it's got the EPM, the circle on, which is a good indicator that it's real, and it's one of the variations of colours. If anyone's unsure, the Imperial Gunnery uh, website is really good for documenting all the all the weapons and accessories, and you can also see like an updated gallery of um, the latest reproduction lines as well, so if you're really unsure, you can check. So I was really glad to get that. I mean, don't get me wrong, it wasn't cheap. But I thought it's one of the last big bits that I needed to add to the collection. So I bought that, yep. So that's my little R2 complete now. Just got to be careful I don't misplace that. Imagine how many of those are lying down the back of couches or in landfill or in back gardens and stuff. It doesn't bear thinking about And now they're worth like well over £150 each. <laughs> uh, crazy. It's actually worth more than the R2 figure. Oh, there we go. I dropped it. <laughs> Nearly went down there on the Swanee. So yeah, that's uh, two bits of uh, weaponry slash accessories that I was really happy to add. Uh, next up is a couple of gifts, and these were gifted to me from my dad, and it goes towards the the sort of figures and characters that were brought out that weren't on the original uh, carded back run of '96. These are like the the creatures from. Uh, like Empire Strikes Back and, and stuff like or like um, Jabba the Hutt and the Dewback a salacious scrum there uh, and this one is off my dad and it's um, I just basically I want examples that I can just put on my shelf and play with when my son's a bit older and it's a taunt on Empire Strikes Back ready with a belly for when uh, Luke Skywalker uh, has to be put inside to keep him alive and Solo cuts him up I think yeah so, yep, yeah, that's nice to add. It's a good little example I can play with with my boy. Surely there. He likes, he's, we've got one actually at my dad, uh, mum and dad's house and he plays with that already in his own. He's not a one yet. <laughs> so I'm sure when he comes in my room when he's a little bit older, he'll want to play with all this stuff, which I'm happy to do. Part of the fun, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so that's a Tauntaun. And from the same film, and it's uh, what causes... Uh, Luke all the problems in the first place when he's out and about. Wampa. Now this is a this has actually come up a really nice nice clean example. My dad bought it and it was quite yellowed and he's give it the retro bright treatment and it's come up really well. If you give it another coat it'd probably be even better because you can probably tell this the, the torso is slightly more yellowed than the legs, which usually happens. Yeah. But I'm really happy with that as well. These are notorious for not standing up properly as well, because you'll see the leg yeah, the feet are like Awkward angles, so it's a real pain in the pain in the bum. But uh, yeah, he's there ready for Luke to chop his arm off. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. So uh, I'm doing quite well with my figures. I'm just looking at my, my little book here of what figures I've got to get now, and it sort of just left me with uh, the size Snootles uh, Max Rebo band, along with the um, the accessories that they have, like the flute and the, the microphone and the, the piano keyboard. And uh, what else do we need? And I could do with maybe the solid solid belly tauntaun. And last but certainly least is the, the big rancor monster, which I know my dad's got. So I might uh, twist his arm and see if he wants to give us that as well. <laughs> yeah, so I was uh, really happy to get those off my dad. So thanks very much, dad. I know you'll be watching this. So that's them. Now, next I've got four boxed... Um, toy sets or, or vehicles. I'll start with the one I bought off eBay myself and this this uh, vehicle is my favourite vehicle at the, out of the entire series and it was the one I played with the most as a kid and this this one is the Rebel Snow Speeder. As you can see it's on the Empire Strikes Back box. It's a good honest, honest example. 
I think I got it actually for a decent price. It was like fifty pound, and it's complete with all the uh, the little bits, like the harpoon and the hatches and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I wonder if that's like um, an Argos sticker from back in the day or Index, remember when they used to put that on? They still do these days, so it'd be interesting to know that if anyone if anyone knows. It's a Palatoy as well. Uh, what year was this? This is 1981, I think. I like it because they actually put the dates on the boxes, which I, I always found good, and they, uh, they put it on the instructions as well. Uh, 1977, 1980. So, yeah, I'm happy to get that. Let's have a look inside. I'll show you the, the actual vehicle itself. The box is so fiddly to get in for this. It's unreal. Let's have a look. So, oh, where's the hatch gone? The, all the bits are in here. Um, I took it to bits for the box. So I've got the hatch and the, the harpoon and stuff in there. Um, now, the seller listed this as not working. The, um, the, the electrics don't work apparently so I'll have to look into that myself I mean I dabble with uh, my consoles and uh, I can mod consoles and I've got soldering station and I mean I can do that no problem I do a bit of work anyway so quite interesting that sort of thing I mess about with Amigas and that as well so I'm sure I'll enjoy taking that apart and seeing what uh, what's in there I can't imagine there's too much to look at a few wires maybe a little uh, electronics board and then you've got your, your bulbs obviously or your lamps yeah so i'll give it a wipe down and what well, it's a lovely i think i, I was going to display it out of the box but i think i'll keep it in the box because these boxes are absolutely fantastic on display iconic i mean i know we're older now and we all say but i don't think we make toy boxes uh, and toys like this anymore yeah so i won't put that back in yet i'll leave it out if you want to see that's the hatch There's your hatch, your harpoon, you see it in there with the, the string on, and that's obviously the guns and stuff, so yeah, really happy with that, nice complete, honest example, that hasn't cost us a fortune, <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, I've seen some of these go for like £140, so I'm, I'm really chuffed to get this, for what, for what it is, it's got the Empire Strikes Back uh, manual as well, because I know the Return of the Jedi version can go a little bit cheaper. So, yep, yeah, happy with that. So that goes uh, pride of place in my display. So next, these next three I bought uh, locally. Um, it's from my uncle, and we we did a deal. We we got fair price. I, I paid a fair price. He got a fair price for them, uh, taking into account eBay prices and and, and such like. Because um, he's sort of selling up what he has left because he, he was a big collector in the 90s uh, around the time my dad was as well and um, he would import a lot from the USA uh, so I thought I might as well add this stuff to my collection um, two bits I would say I never really played with as a kid they didn't take my, uh, my interest and you'll, pro you'll probably understand why in a minute but I was aware of them because my dad had them as well um, so I'll talk about the first one so it is the Land of the Jowers playset. Action playset, should I say. Yep. Um, this is fully complete, apart from it's missing a few little clips that hold the this sort of cardboard bit together. It's got the, the escape pod, so I'm really chuffed with that. Uh, let's have a look inside. The box is in, in, in nice condition as well. It's got all the flaps and stuff. Uh, what year was this? Let's have a look. I think 1977 maybe, no, uh, can't remember, 1977 it says on the box, 1979 by uh, Division Kenner Products, Cincinnati, Ohio, so there you go, let's have a look at the escape pod, there's a fancy little bit, <laughs> there we go, I've got some bits and pieces in there. This is what it's missing. I've got one or two. Uh, no, sorry, no, that's not what it's missing. Yeah, so the, the parts are in there, keeping it safe. But that's your escape pod that you put R2 and C3PO in. Um, and then obviously the cardboard bits in the base. That's the base. And I've got all the cardboard bits uh, still in, uh, in this envelope. I've seen my, my uncle must have got it from America, so it's in one of those. Just keeping it safe. 
that unfolds and you clip them together and it shows you the, the sand crawler. So put that back in there. You gotta love the smell of the old um the old boxes, the ash on the ridge now. I mean these things if it was nineteen seventy nine when this came out, it's like six years older than me. <laughs> Probably even better nick. <laughs> yeah, so nineteen seventy nine on the uh on the instructions here. Do you know what I love about this? This is how you know if it's complete or not. It gives you the list, the parts list, and I think that's a fantastic little thing. Uh, I just love looking through it and seeing. Imagine back in the day, the kids looking at this. I mean, how old would they be now? 50s? Absolutely amazing. Really enjoy that. Good, good condition as well. So yeah, that's the first one. I won't talk about prices for these three because it's obviously between me and my uncle and all I'll say is it, it was fair for the condition um, judging by eBay prices and stuff like that and uh, parts that were missing. So I will source the parts eventually. I have seen them on in saw listing so they do pop up um, but there's no rush, no rush at all really. It's all part of the fun isn't it, the hunt. Um, this next one I got at the same time as the, as the Land of the Jowers um, and this one it says 1977 again. I'll see. I don't know if it's got instructions. I can't remember. And this one is the cantina, the creature cantina playset. Now this is complete apart from the door, and I have seen the door for sale as well. So I will add it eventually. But I, can you imagine playing with this as a kid? I mean, there's not much to it, is there? It's probably why I never touched it. I preferred the vehicles, obviously. And it's maybe why these things are. At more scarce these days than what <laughs> there's the basin up there. Yeah. It's quite uh it's quite a basic toy but it's a very early toy isn't it when you when you think about it. Yep we've got the creature cantina action play play set parts list and instructions 1979 again there you go yeah, it's got that old like library smell. And that's the uh, backdrop. Look at look at the art on this. 1977, 1978 written on this one. Look at that. Original. I know these can be uh reproduced as well, I've seen them. But that's fully like the original. That's beautiful artwork. There you go, I'll be stuck in your head all day now, that tune. <laughs> yeah, so I was really happy with that. Once I've got the door, um, I might actually put that up as a display and rotate the displays. Obviously, the display in the box is really nice, which is what I'm doing at the moment. As you can see to my left, I've got a few of the bits and pieces in the past. I'll put that back in there. There we go. And finally, uh, this is uh, the latest uh, piece I added to my, my set. I did play with this when I was younger and I'm sure this is a, a favourite of a lot of people. Um, not this version, but the original version. This is the Battle Damaged X-Wing Fighter. Now this is particularly really nice and it's the Empire Strikes Back one. Really nice box on this. If there's any sort of creasing or, or like, see this rippling, they, they do iron quite well, these things. If you take all the stuff out, flatten them out, and give them a gentle iron with a cloth on top, they do come out really nice. It's a little tip for retro games as well, that. Um, this is uh, 1981, it says on the box. Kenner again. So let's have a look inside. It's got a KMR sticker on. There you go. Back. I always have the same picture on the to side. Let's have a look inside. Eh? Now look at this. Can you tell it's the grey type next wing? Lovely. It's got a couple of stickers on, but not all. If you look at this, 
There's the guns. The bag's been slipped, but the guns are all there. The cannon, should I say. And look at that hatch. Lovely. Uh, we've also got the, the deco sheet. Still in there. Obviously been used in a slightly mouldy. <laughs> so it's nice to still to have that. And what have we got in here? Oh, look at this. Now it's the battle damage, isn't it? And you didn't see any battle damage on it because it still has the battle damage sheet. So it was really chuffed to get this in the condition it's in. 1978 Kenner Products Authorised User. Lovely. And there you go. You've got the X-Wing Fighter Assembly Instruction Sheet. Really nice. So yeah, show you that one more time. See if I can get it out. I don't really want to take it out of the cardboard because it's a bit of a pain to get back in. It's like a mastermind trying to get these in and out. It's like the snow speeder boxes is like a mastermind uh, type of deal every time you go into it. Yeah, so I'm really happy with that. That's a it's an iconic piece as well. So yeah. Uh, there we have it. That's my Star Wars pickups for the last couple of months. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to get uh, in the coming months, but I might surprise myself and treat myself as well. So, you will be the first to know once I've bought some stuff and put it together again for another pickups video. So, as ever, thanks for watching, everyone. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.